Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to discuss previous year questions related to economics. The idea is not to give you the answer key or even explanation that you might have already, but mainly to give you an approach to appear for this examination. Because in recent year, you might have noticed that the UPSC is changing the pattern and where calculative risk is almost necessary. You have to take some risk uh, and some of the questions. And remember that undoubtedly these approach or elimination method will be applied not in every question, but wherever possible that will try to do that. So let's just start. Consider the first statement of this question. Look, in this question, I am assuming that the student who is appearing in this examination, they don't have much idea or even you have a zero idea, but still you should attempt this question in the examination or not, or you should just leave this question that we are going to see. Look at the first statement. They are saying that value of Indo-Sri Lanka trade has consistently increased in the last decade. There are two, three words here. Look, consistently increased and in the last decade, it means they are talking about the 10 years. And trade, when they talk about, it means export and import between India and Sri Lanka. Look, Sri Lanka is not a big partner of India in export and import. So it has consistently increased in the last decade. It has a very less chance to be correct. So you can eliminate option A, a statement one. And so if you eliminate one, it means that you are eliminating A and D. Now you are left only with B and C. And in B and C, there is only one need to be correct because two only or three only. So see the second statement. That says textile and textile article constitute an important item of the trade between India and Bangladesh. Remember, look, it's not only between India and Bangladesh, but the textile article is a very important item for Bangladesh in export. Almost 75% of the uh, no, Bangladesh export comes from the textile only. But even if you don't know this, you must have heard or you have gone through the newspaper that textile is one of the most important article for Bangladesh. So the statement second has the highest probability here to be correct. But look at the statement three also. In the last five years, Nepal has been the largest trading partner of India in South Asia. Look, in South Asia, the country like the Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Nepal, all are there. And where Bangladesh is, then it has a very less probability that Nepal will have the largest trading partner of India because the Bangladesh is a booming uh, economy. Bangladesh has having the booming economy in last few years that you must have heard it. So the third statement has a very less probability to be correct. So you can eliminate third also. You may win with only two and that is the correct statement. So you can notice one thing here that even if you do not have the exact information that which is the largest uh, export partner, import partner and all, still you must attempt this, this question just going through elimination method and whatever you have learned in the uh, preparation. Coming to the second statement. Look, this is just a knowledge based question. It means that if you know uh, the what is called flow chart of current account and capital account or balance of payment, then you will be able to understand it. So, uh, so they are asking about which of the following constitute capital account. Look, in balance of payment, there are three main things, the component of it. The one is the current account, another is capital account, and then the forex reserve. Right. If you just remember this table, then it is very easy to, uh, you can click it or you can take the screenshot if you want. If you remember this table, then you will never be able to uh, miss the question related to capital account or current account. Look at this question again. Under current account, you must remember one thing, they are you know, visible and invisible. Under invisible, they are the you know, services, then the income, and then the transfer. When they talk about transfer, it also talk about the remittances. It is a private transfer. It means the someone suppose is living in US or the UK, they are sending money to the person who is living in India, right? That is private remittances. That is the part of current account. So the statement third has to be incorrect because the transfer is under current account, not capital account. So wherever three, you can eliminate it. So three is in the A, three is in C, and three is in D. So all are eliminated, you are only left with option B, and that is your correct statement. So you can notice again one thing that even if you have a little idea, you can just solve this question by going through elimination. Coming to the question three, balance of payment, which of the following constitute the current account? In this, they're asking about the current account. Look, balance of trade, whenever you talk about balance of trade, look, under BOP, what we have seen, there are two things, mainly two things, current account and capital account. Under current account, we have a goods, mainly the visible items and invisible items. In visible, we talk about the goods, means whatever goods is being traded between two countries, right? Or among other countries, India is uh, having the trade. So 
Either the export and import of goods is called balance of trade. It means if your uh, export is more, then your balance of trade is positive. If your export, import is more, then your balance of trade is negative. So balance of trade is part of current account. There is, there is no doubt about it. First is correct. Second statement, leave the second statement, come to the third. Balance of invisible. Look, I have already told you, current account consists visible and invisible. So one and three has to be there, right? Because that is what it constitutes. And there is nothing more than that. Under invisible, there are three, four items. But you just remember even the basics that current account constitute visible and invisible. Then you can easily understand that the balance of trade is talking about the visible. And balance of invisible means it is talking about invisible thing like services and all. So these two must be under current account. Now look at the option before coming to the you know, second statement or the fourth statement. One and three must be there. So only one option here where there is one and three. There is no other option where the both one and three exist. So you can easily understand that the C will be your correct statement. Now if you go through the foreign assets, undoubtedly that is the part of capital uh, account. And a special drawing right, not exactly the part of capital account, but under the, uh, what is called the forex, it will come. So anyways, the answer will be one and three. Coming to the question number four, this is very interesting question, right? The visit by foreign nationals to witness the Commonwealth Games in India amounted to, look, if any foreigners are coming to India, leave about they are coming to watch Commonwealth Games, even in general, if the people from other country, they are visiting your country, where you will put that money, right, under balance of payment? The answer will be export. How it is so? Look, suppose that as we have seen under BOP, the our uh, flow chart said it is the current account, then the capital account mainly. Under current account, we have a visible and invisible as we have seen. Look, suppose if the foreigner is coming in your country, what they will be utilizing in this country? Means what we are offering to them. Means we'll be giving them hospitality, right? We'll be providing them the room, the food, services and all. And for all these, they'll be paying money to us, right? So when we are providing services to them, they are giving money instead. It means we are exporting our service to them and they are paying money. So that is why the visiting of foreign nationals or the tourism is known as the invisible export, right? Because we are providing money, we are providing services to them and they are providing money to us. So under this, under BOP, under current account, it will come under invisible and under service things because we are providing services and we are getting money. The answer will be the export. It is very interesting uh, question. Coming to this, the closed, this is a very easy question, closed economy and economy in which. So generally closed economy simply means that where the export or import do not take places. Neither export nor import. Look, the other options if you see, the money supply is fully controlled. That will not con consider as a closed economy because even if you are closing it, suppose you are fully controlling it, you are talking about your own country itself. You are not talking about the other country. Deficit financing, only export, no it is not. So if a country where there is neither export nor import, that is called uh, closed economy. Coming to this, <laughs> agreement on agriculture, agreement on application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures and peace clause appear in the news frequently the contest of the affairs of. Under international organization, you have gone through several organization in which you know it very well, it is related to WTO. Now what is this agreement of agriculture? Look, suppose that any country gives subsidy to the farmers, right? So suppose if India gives subsidy to any particular product, say it wheat itself, or no, uh, or say sugar itself, because sugar was in the news, sugar, uh, no, export of, uh, sorry, subsidy on sugar was in news, because the uh, WTO asked India to explain that why the, you are giving much more subsidy, because the country like Australia and some other country, they have complained against India that India is giving much more subsidy on sugar. Suppose if India gives higher subsidy on any of the commodity, in international market, the price of that commodity will be less. So what will happen that it will do the, somehow the no, trade will not be trade, distorting it will be there. Because you are giving extra advantage to your, own, or to, your, to your own country by giving subsidy to the product. So that is not good. That's why WTO came with some of the, uh, you know, what is called agreement, that how much subsidy you can provide, how much subsidy. Under agreement on agriculture, the subs, you know, what is called, there are two, three terms like the blue box, the green box, then the amber box, they have taken so that uh, you can put some uh, commodity into that and then the subsidy can be given or not can be given. That is the agreement on agriculture. Agreement on application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures, that talks about the, what is called, suppose if a country is uh, using some something or producing something by degrading the environment and all, right? Or you are not maintaining the, what is called, international measurement of any product. Suppose that you are making honey, as the honey was also in the news, and you are selling something. But in that honey, honey is not pure. You are putting some more, much more sugar into it. 
then that is the agreement on application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures. It means you cannot violate the norms of making products or you cannot violate environment either. So these are the and peace clause. It is talking about that if certain developing country or underdeveloped country can somehow violate, not exactly violate, but they can have some easy going on the, what is called, on agreement on agriculture or by, on giving subsidies. Because they are developing country and if they need it, they can give under peace clause on certain conditions. So this is related to WTO. The answer will be the C. Coming to the next, the same question, amber box, blue box, and green box is related to which one? I have already told you it is the WTO affair. These are the factual question. It does not require much more knowledge. You just remember and you first solve it. This is again the fact, the quantity of imported edible oil is more than the domestic production of edible oil in the last five years, right? That is true, well, more than 60% we have uh, what is called uh, imported it, so that's true. The government does not impose any custom duty on all uh, uh, imported edible oils in a special case. No, government impose ex uh, excise, du sorry, uh, uh, custom duty on it. Custom duty means the duty that is uh, taken on the import of the product, so it, it does it. So only one will be correct, second is not correct. Coming to the next, agriculture commodity imported by India, which of the following account for the highest import accounts for the highest import in terms of value in the last year? Look, in this, uh, these questions are actually uh, very much factual and you will find it in the India yearbook, also in the uh, economic survey. But in the last economic survey, they have not talked about this, but India, in the India yearbook, it has, uh, what is called, taken it. So vegetable oil is the answer. And it not necessarily that whatever the data is this year, that will continue the next year. That's why you need to uh, study India yearbook selectively where these data are given that India is importing highest, uh, which of the product highest, which of the product minimum and all. So that if that is being asked, you can solve. And the, recently it has changed. So it's not necessarily that which one is done, the number one, number two, that will remain same everywhere. That is why you study. So, but in this question, the answer is D. Coming to the next, the, uh, this again the fact, largest exporter of rice, that is India, right? No, India is the largest exporter of rice in the world. Balance the payment of the country's systematic record of. Look, this is one of the questions that was controversial, right? Even, uh, no, but at the end, whatever UPSC provides the answer key, we have to, uh, what is called, follow that. Why it was the controversial answer? Uh, because all of the option, among all A, B, C, D, not a single option is giving the right statement, exactly what is the meaning of balance of payment. Look, whenever we talk about balance of payment, it simply means the transaction between residents of one country to the residents of another country whatever transaction is being placed. It means, suppose that if a country A is sending money something, or the, some money is coming from the country A to country B, the country B will write in their balance of payment account as a plus. If some money is going from the country B to country A, country B will write in the minus, right? They will deduct it. But it is between the transaction between residents of one country to residents of another country. That uh, statement is not given in any of the statement, but let's see it, what is the problem? Look, option B and the option D is easily eliminated because that is nonsensical. There is nothing related to it. The confusion between A and C. The first statement is talking about all import and export transaction of a country during a given period, normally year. Look, when we have seen the, what is called flow chart of BOP, we have seen under the current account, there is a visible and invisible. Under visible, we talked that whatever goods are being transported, or, no, or trade between one country to another, that is called balance of trade, not balance of payment. So it is talking about all import and export transactions. But yeah, there is one thing here, it is not talking about import and exports of goods only, right? It's not mentioned. But still, it is not talking about other factors. So whenever we talk only ex import and export transaction, it is rightly, or it can be said it is talking about balance of trade, not the balance of payment. But still, we'll see the C, op option C also. Economic transaction between the government of one country to another. What is the problem in this? Look, as we have already discussed that the, this is the transaction between residents of one country to another, not the government between two government. But again, the problem is what is residence, right? Or individual, whenever you talk about individual, who is an individual in the country? All the people that we are, also the family, also the business, also the government, even a state is an individual. So overall, even the transaction between two residents of one country to another can be considered as the transaction between two governments. It is not necessarily that every individual is doing the transaction. So it can be considered as well. But UPC has taken option A as a correct statement. Now why A is more suitable? That is why while solving the previous year question, we learned one thing that sometimes it depends on the interpretation of question setter. And secondly, that which of the following is the most accurate option? 
it is not necessarily that must be accurate, right, or must be correct, but the most suitable option. So A seems the most suitable because it is talking about the transaction of one country in a given period, all import and export. So A can be taken, undoubtedly UPSC has taken A as an answer, so A is a correct answer. Coming to the next, with reference to the international trade of India at present, which of the following statement is correct. Again, look, in this question, uh, the, there are so many statements, you might feel confusing and all, but remember, whenever there are three, four statements, you always apply one formula. You need to find which statement must be correct or which statement must not be correct. If you are able to find any of them, then it is easy to go through it. Now, again, in this four statement, suppose if you are not sure about one statement, try to find one or two statements that is must be correct. The first statement is saying India's merchandise export. Look, whenever they talk about merchandise export, it simply means they are talking about goods only, not services and all. So merchandise export are less than is merchandise import. Is it true or not? It is true because India has a you know, balance of trade deficit for last several years. So India's merchandise export are less than import. That is true. So first has to be correct. It means now you just eliminate B and C. You lift with only 1 and 2 or 1, 3 and 4. Now it is still not giving us the main, you know, what is called complete picture. So look at the statement second. India's import of iron and steel, chemicals, fertilizers, and machinery have decreased in the recent years. Now, this statement required must have knowledge because in the recent years, it has decreased or not consistently because it is not talking about it. Suppose if you don't know this statement, so just leave this statement for a time being and come to the statement three. India's export of services are more than its import of services. Look, India is a service economy, right? Our, no, the contribution of service in India's GDP is more than 55%, about 55%. So India is in service economy. Also, if you see India's FDI and all, in services, we are doing fine, right? So India's export of services are more than import of services. That's true because we are service providing nation. So third statement must be correct, right? So what we have found, the statement one must be correct, a statement third must be correct. And we have only one option. That is one, three, and four. It has, it has three. Suppose that even if you are not sure about third statement, come to the statement four. India suffers from an overall trade current account deficit. That's true because it is always in the news. And if you are a UPS student, you must be reading newspaper and all. And you know that India is suffering from the trade misbalance of trade deficit and also current account deficit. In the last 17 to 18 years, India has suffered current account deficit continuously, except one quarter, right? You know, in the last year, one quarter India's current account deficit was much little better, right? Miss plus. But that is just a quarter, not year to year wise. So in the last 17, 18 years, India has a current account deficit and you must be knowing that. So it means fourth statement also must be correct. Now look, with statement one, even if you know one of the statement about three or four, that must be correct, you will be only choosing this. Because with one, only one statement where three is also there, four is also there. So statement D will be, or option D is the correct statement. Now what we have learned in this, it's not about knowing just the fact. What is this? That even if you don't know that iron, steel, chemical, fertilizer, and machinery has decreased in recent years, still you can solve this question with just going through some basic knowledge that you have earned. Though for your information, it has not actually decreased, even it has increased a little bit, right? Coming to the next question. <laughs> Import covered, right? Like, which of the following best described? You simply, uh, if you know, look, this particular option or this particular question, you should only attempt if you know this terminology. Otherwise, you should leave it. Why? Because this is a term that you need to know. Uh, you cannot just get confused in the examination. Import cover simply means that, look, suppose if a country, and what is the import? Suppose that uh, country, India is importing oil, right, from Russia. If you are importing oil, you need to give money to them, right? And if you do not have money, suppose that today you have imported one liter of oil. I am just taking a smaller example for comprehensive. Suppose you have imported one liter of oil. You need to have money to give them because you are buying it. So for how many days you can buy it, right? If you have, suppose, for next 10 days, if you have money so that for the next 10 days you can buy, that will be considered as import cover, that you can buy it for how long. So this is for understanding in uh, technical term that in how long you can buy, right? That is what. So in the, in the month wise it is considered. Your option is it is the number of month of import that could be paid by a country's international region. So whatever international region you have, right, that must be sufficient enough to buy all the import that we do. And if you do not have, then we will have a balance of payment crisis. Remember in 1991 crisis, India have the international reserves only for the next 15 days. Right? 
If he otherwise, if we do, you know, would not have taken loan from IMF and the Bank of England, then India would not have you know, more than 15 days import cover. It for all petrol pump would have been dried and all. That is the statement. For, uh, D is your option, state, uh, correct statement. Uh, who, who, consider the following action which, of the, which the government can take. Uh, which of the above action can help in reducing the current account deficit? As the no, current account deficit we have just talked, and in current account deficit we have a visible items, it means uh, goods uh, transaction, and then the in invisible item in which there are the services, then the income, the factor income, and then the trans uh, no, transfer amount, like the private remittances, these are there. So what are the uh, action government can take to reduce it? Because as we have just learned, we have a current account deficit in the last 17, 18 years. So devaluating the domestic currency, will that help or not? Look, simply understanding current account deficit means we have more import and less export. So import is larger than export, that is current account deficit. So if you want to reduce current account deficit, it simply means that how can you increase export? So what are the ways you can increase export? It means if your export will be higher, your current account deficit will be lowered, as simple as that. So devaluating the currency, if you devaluate your currency, it means suppose that in international ex market, your currency right now, just for example, one dollar is equivalent to 50 rupees right now. And if you devaluating it, it means one dollar will be equivalent to 100 rupees right now. That is the devaluation, right? So if you are doing the devaluation, what will happen? The inter in the international market, our product, you know, what is called? The price of the product will be much less. So if the price will be less, our output will be higher. So it will help reduce the current deficit. The first statement is correct. Reducing the export subsidy. Now, can this be credit statement or not? No, because look, if you reduce the export subsidy, the price of our product will be higher in the international market. So if our price will be higher, because you are reducing the subsidy, <coughs> sorry, so the, uh, no, the company who is selling the product, they have to increase the price just to manage the subsidy that you have reduced. So price will be higher, our export will be less, then, uh, and we have what we have learned, if our export will be less, it will increase the current account deficit. So second will be incorrect. Adopting suitable policy which attract greater FDI and more fund from FIA. Look, here some student can get confused. It's what we have learned under balance of payment that under capital account, the FDI and FII comes. FDI and FII does not come under current account. It's talking about current account deficit. It is not talking about capital. So you might think some of the person, some of the student can think that because FDI and FI is related to capital account, it may be incorrect statement because we are talking about current account deficit. But look, it is talking about reducing current account deficit. Suppose adopting suitable policy which attract FDI. So FDI is directly related to the current account, but indirect, sorry, FDI is directly related to the capital account, but indirectly related to the current account. How it is so? Under FII, if more money is coming to India, and who is taking that money, or where this money is being invested, that money is coming to the companies of India, right? So suppose if more money will be coming in any of the company in India, then the production of the company will increase. If the production will be increasing, then we will have a more export. So indirectly, it will increase our export also. So it will be the correct statement. So one and three will be correct, right? Now look at the, uh, what is called a statement again. If you don't know, if you know the two, so two if you eliminate it, and the only three and one and three. So no, one, not only three, but the first will not. The answer will be one and three. Which of the following would include FDI in India? Uh, look, again in this, this is a very easy question to attempt, if you know it, otherwise you can get confused. FDI and FPI are two components. FPI is also called FII, right? Means foreign institutional investment or foreign portfolio investment. And FDI is foreign direct investment. So see, it simply means they're asking you which of the following would include in FDI. And the fourth statement is talking about portfolio investment. So the statement itself is given, it is not FDI, it is FPI. So fourth must be incorrect. So just eliminate four. So four is here, four is here. Now one and three or one, two and three. It means one and three must be correct because it is in the both options. Just go through the elimination. One and three in C also, one and three in D also. What about the statement two? If you just sure about a statement two, you'll easily be able to solve this question. So they are talking about majority foreign equity holding in Indian company. Is it FDI or not? It is FDI. Majority for, suppose I just take the example of Flipkart. That is a very famous example of FDI. In Flip, Flipkart, there are more than 80% equity belong to the Walmart now because Walmart has bought the 80, more than 80% share of the FDI, of the Flipkart. So if the majority foreign equity is being held by foreign company, that is still be considered as FDI. So st second statement is correct. So answer will be all one, two, sorry, uh, no, what is called? Uh, one, two, and three, yeah. 
Though for your understanding, let's see, let me explain the other statement also. Subsidiaries of company in India. That's true because look, in India, if any FDI, in the, uh, any company is coming, they are buying the shares either the, in the company directly or in the subsidiaries of company also. That is also considered as FDI. Second statement we have already explained. Third, com companies exclusively financed by foreign companies. That is true because they are financing it, means they are buying shares, so that will also be considered the one, two, and three will be your credit statement. Two will not be there. Uh, sorry, uh, the fourth statement, about, apart from four, all are correct. Coming to the next statement. It refers to the FDI in India, which of the following is considered its major characteristic. Uh, before coming to the question, let me tell you one thing. In this session, actually, we are solving question topic-wise, because we have taken one topic, and from that topic, whatever the UPC has asked, we are solving it. As you can notice, from the last three post four questions, is related to only FDI. Earlier, we have solved question to balance of payment related. So this will also help you to uh, solve question topic-wise. So whatever topic you are right now going through, you will be able to understand what are the questions or which type of questions are coming from that topic. Coming to the question, uh, with reference to FDI, which of the following considers major characteristic? Remember one thing, though difference between FDI and FII is still not very much clear. India has adopted the definition you know, of the, uh, given by OECD. Earlier, it was much more confusion. But it's still two major characteristics of FDI and FII you can consider. One, that the under FDI, right, if the investment is more than 10%, right, if the investment is less than 10%, that will be considered as FII. If the investment is more than 10%, it is considered as FDI. That is the basic definition, though there are some uh, conditions in that also, but we will stick to that. And second, under FDI, the not only money, but the management also comes. It means you can see them. Right now, suppose that their technology also comes, they comes with that. Under FII, you only invest money. That is third thing you need to understand that under FDI, you buy shares of the company. You don't give them debt, right? You, uh, suppose that if you are paying, you know, buying shares, that is the, your share and also called debenture in which you are just giving money to the company and they are paying uh, some interest to you. But no, under FDI, you don't do that. You just give, no, you, you do not give debt, but you are buying shares. That is FDI. But under FII, you are investing money into them, right? So FDI is not a debt thing, FII is. So now see that options. Look, the it is an investment through capital instrument, essentially listed company. No, it is essentially non-listed company, right? And in listed, there are options, there are 10% and above, we leave that. Second, it is largely non-debt creating capital flow. What we have learned, is it true or not? FDI is a non-debt. Because when you are investing or any company from the foreign country is investing money in India, through FDI, that is not a debt. Suppose that Walmart has bought Flipkart 80% share. If the Flipkart is completely destroyed, right, or completely, you know, bankrupt, then what will happen? Flipkart will give money back to them? No, because then it simply means that the Walmart will be in the loss. So that is not a debt. They are buying shares. It means buying the company itself or some of the portion of the company. So FDI is not a debt. Uh, you can easily understand. This is largely non-debt creating capital flow. So B will be your answer. And other options, if you see investment which involve debt services, uh, no, it is not a debt services, it is opposite to the B, so undoubtedly this will be incorrect. This will be incorrect. It is investment made by foreign institutional investment, though that is called FII, not FDI. So it will also incorrect. This is an easy question if you just understand the definition, difference between these two. Which of the following is not the most likely measure of government RBI to stop the slide of Indian rupee? The option is not most likely. Also, you need to focus on not as well. Look, they are asking you that which of the uh, step RBI or government will not take. If the rupees value is depreciating, sliding, just coming to the statement D, following an expansionary monetary policy. What is expansionary monetary policy? Expansionary, monetary, look, under monetary policy, we have a quantitative tools like the, you know, what is called SLR, CRR, right, no? CRR, then the repo rate, uh, reverse repo rate, etc., etc. We have the so many tools. So expansionary will be called, it means RBI is decreasing the rate. That is expansionary. Suppose 4% right now, right? And if the RBI decrease the CR to 2%, it is expansionary monetary policy. Why it is expansionary? Because then there will be much more money into the market, right? And economy will expand. That is why it is expansionary. Now, if the Indian rupee value is already low, right? And if you do the expansionary monetary policy, it means you are putting more money into the market. Do you think that the Indian currency will depreciate it? No, it will again depreciate because it is a very basic thing to understand. If there is something, anything in the market, that is the availability of that is much more, their value will be less. 
that is very simple of that right as you know uh, why the diamond is much more valuable than water that is the basic example given by every economist because the availability availability of diamond is very rare that's why but availability of water is much more so the value is depreciating so if you want what is called following expansionary monetary policy it means you are putting much more money into the market if you are putting money into the market it simply degrade the value of it so it, you know, the government is not going to take it and so it will be d but if you see other statement also curbing import of non essential good and promoting exports no that is uh, not necessarily there is nothing to do with that uh, uh, encouraging indian borrowers to issue rupee denominated masala bond this is uh, easing condition related to external competition these are not something you know uh, related to even slide of rupees so these will not be d will be your answer coming to the next ppp exchange rates are calculated by comparing the same baskets of goods look that's true how we do the ppp you know suppose for, just for uh, example uh, right now you know, when we understand that one dollar right now is approximately 80 rupees right the value of 80 rupees uh, approximately it may be a little higher and lower today but this is not the ppp of india while doing ppp we took the lots of commodity in the same basket suppose that if the price of uh, say it one burger or one coca cola is uh, no two dollar in us right and in india it is suppose that 10 rupees right now just one coca cola is priced 10 rupees in india and two dollar in us so while deciding ppp what do we do we divide 10 by 2 and it will be 5 rupees it means one dollar is equivalent to 5 rupees but that is just a one commodity while doing uh, calculating ppp we do not just take one commodity but the major commodity and then we finalize it but it's true that it is the same basket of goods and services so first is correct in terms of ppp dollar india is the sixth largest economy no it is the third largest economy after the china and us right the remember under ppp china is on top then the us and then the india but under other gdp and all that us is on top so that is also important second is correct first is not, sorry second is not correct first is correct because india is the third largest economy so only one will be the correct statement coming to the next which of the following groups of items is included in india's foreign exchange reserve So under foreign exchange reserve, there are four main items. Number one is undoubtedly foreign currency. It means the dollar and all that you have. Number two, what will be the two? Number two is the SDR. SDR is the currency, not exactly the currency, but the denomination given by the uh, IMF. That is the. And the, the fourth is the tranche value of India in the S IMF, right? So these four are the forex reserve. Now see where it is. All three or four. So. Uh, Foreign currency asset that is true. If special drawing right that is true, and loans from foreign country no loans is not there. We have already seen there are only four three. Foreign currency asset that is true. Gold holding that is true. SDR that is true. So second is correct. And then because second is correct, we will not going through the third and fourth. B will be the answer. <coughs> the problem of international liquidity is related to non availability of. Look, when we talk about liquidity, what is the meaning of liquidity in the uh, international market or even in domestic market? liquidity same thing means the easily exchangeable right and international market which is the uh, currency which is easily exchangeable undoubtedly dollar or the other hard currency hard currency simply means the currency demanded by the most of the economy or that is easily exchangeable or have the maximum liquidity in the international market so the, uh, if the problem of international liquidity is related to non availability that's true they are talking about that so if there is less availability of dollar or the other hard currency that is the problem of international liquidity so answer will be c convertibility of rupee look that is very easy to understand convertibility of rupee simply means that how easily you can convert your rupee into any international currency that is the convertibility of rupee means are you allowed to convert your rupee indian rupee into the us dollar or in japanese yen or not so that is the definition means are you free or not in india it is 100% free means current account convertibility is 100% but capital account convertibility is partial you just remember that and under current account it is 100% uh, what is called convertible means if you want to convert your currency you can easily do it so the answer will be freely permitting the conversion of rupee to other currency and vice versa to any other currency that is if you are allowed or not that is just a definition if another global financial crisis happens in the near future that is about to happen now uh, it is expected that the global financial crisis is coming as some of the economy saying which of the following explicit most likely to give some immunity to india not depending on short term body look we have learned in past also in 1991 financial crisis what is the meaning of short term buying buying means that you have taken the less than one year that is for short -term. and more long term is more than one year it means if a country has borrowed money for less than one year it means it has to be paid within one year that is a short term borrowing in india in the 1991 for short term borrowing was more than the forex reserve that we have all the interest reserve 
means our forest reserve was about one billion dollar, and our short term borrowing was one point two billion dollar. Suppose even if we have given entire forest reserve, still we had some what is called short term borrowing there. So we have learned it that our short term borrowing must be less because there is a pressure to give it back. Right. In a long term borrowing, suppose you have taken a long term loan from the you know, World Bank and all, that you have to pay after 20 years. So that is fine, you can manage it. But if it is a short term borrowing, then within one year you have to pay it back. And if you are not able to do it, then there will be crisis. So undoubtedly, first is true that in coming financial, if there is a crisis is coming, you must be immune that you must not have more forex, uh, foreign, uh, short, sorry, short term borrowing. Opening a more foreign bank. Look, it is a little confusing statement. Why it will help you? can say that if the foreign banks are here, it may, may bring money and all. In financial crisis, it is not going to help you directly in either way. So this statement does not make much sense. Maintaining full account convertibility. First, what is the meaning of full account capital? Sorry, full capital account convertibility. Under capital account, what are the components? If you remember it, right? Under capital account, there was a FDI, FII also, right? So first talk about FDI, FII only. In FDI, FII, if there are 100% convertibility, fully full convertibility means 100% convertibility. So suppose if the FII can be converted 100% from India to US, it will create volatility in India. That is why it is still not allowed, right? In India, capital account convertibility is not allowed because it will create volatility, right? And remember one thing, uh, which country is the ideal place to invest more money? Undoubtedly US or some other, but a country like India or other developing countries, they do not have a stable economy. So in that economy, the investor would like to invest less. So if there will be 100% convertibility, then the capital flight will be there from India to other country. And that will create problems for the country. It will not help in solving crisis, even it will be ba bad for the crisis in the crisis. Because in the crisis time, the investors are looking for the economy that will not affect much more. So third statement will not be correct. Only one will be correct in this. Consider the following statement. Tight monetary policy of U.S. Federal Reserve would lead to capital flight. That is true. Look, first thing, when you talk about capital flight, what is the meaning of capital flight? Capital flight means, suppose this is U.S., as it is talking about U.S., and this is India, right? So if money is coming, sorry, outflowing from India to U.S., that is considered as capital flight from India, right? Or not only to U.S., for any economy. It means there is outflow of money from India to other countries. And if it is coming to India, that is the thing. So capital flight means the outflow of money. Now it is saying tight monetary policy of U.S. Federal Reserve would lead to capital flight or not. It will die. And tight monetary policy of U.S. means what? Increasing the interest rate. For example, suppose in India, repo rate, reserve repo rate, if they are increasing it, it means they are tightening monetary policy. So if U.S. Federal Reserve increase it, how it will lead to capital flight from India? Look, suppose if they are tightening the interest rate, it means there will be less availability of dollar in the market, right? And that market in the U.S. market will become much more valuable for the investment because they will get much more interest in state, right? So if the U.S. market is tightening, it, it means there are less money in the market. So investors are investing in those markets because they will get higher interest rate. So that will lead to capital flight from India to other countries. Now in this question, look, even in the last year also, in 2020, 2022 itself, I think in last year also, they have asked one question related to the capital flight. And there is a confusion among the question solver that, it is not clearly mentioned it is capital flight from India to other country or from other country to India, right? But we are considering it in the Indian context. So this has to be correct statement because it is the capital will be flighting from India to US because of the uh, interest rate they will be getting much more. So first statement is correct. Capital flight may increase the interest cost of firms with existing external commercial borrowing. Look, so existing, uh, sorry, external commercial borrowing means what? External commercial borrowing simply means that the, the bonds issued in the foreign currency, right? So if the foreign currency in the, the bonds and, uh, you know, is, is being issued, the capital flight may increase the interest rate. That we have also already talked in the first statement. That why the capital flight will take place? Because interest rate will be higher there, right? So the capital flight may increase the interest cost of firms with existing ECB because they have already issued it, right? And if the interest rate is increasing, that will be uh, the correct one. The second is also correct. Third is devaluation of domestic currency decrease the currency risk associated with ECB. Look, as I told you, ECB means the, the issuance in the foreign currency, right? And if you are devaluating the domestic currency, how it will affect the foreign currency, right? So it is not going to affect foreign currency directly because you are devaluating your own currency. Devaluating means you are, deva you know, what is called decreasing the value of your own currency, <coughs> sorry, in comparison to the other foreign currency. The third statement is not correct. Only one and two will be correct. 
coming to the next payment bank is being allowed look in, in uh, these are very uh, very much in use in recent time right you know, which of the following is correct uh, before coming to this let me see that uh, the earlier question you can solve with the elimination or not because i forgot to tell you that in the beginning i told you the all the questions that is difficult not all but most of the difficult question that is being asked by upsc nowadays always give you hint right if you know little bit information you are going to solve this question so look this question that we have already solved if you are somehow correct or see that the domestic currency will uh, what call uh, will not decrease the currency you can eliminate all the option wherever three is there so this can be eliminated this can be eliminated this can be eliminated simply by knowing option 3 statement 3 right and then you can solve again in this question, payment bank is being allowed in india look uh, payment bank cannot undertake lending activity payment bank can see the statement second payment bank can issue both credit card and debit card no they cannot issue credit card they can only issue debit card so second statement is incorrect now wherever second just eliminated you are only left with one and three so as simple as that you know uh, when raghuram rajan was the rbi governor at that time only uh, after few years there was small finance bank and payment bank both issued payment bank like the airtel bank the jio that you have all the they have launched the payment bank so they are allowed to uh, issue the debit card but not the credit card so second statement is not correct and first in second case mobile telephone company i have already told you that is the airtel and all that is uh, are owned and controlled by residents are eligible to promote payment bank that is true payment bank cannot undertake lending activity that is true also means they cannot give you loan right they can take the deposit but not loan so b will be correct one A small finance bank. I have already told you that was launched to supply a small business. It's true, a small business unit. Uh, there, that look uh, to establish payment bank and a small financial bank. Main goal is to do the financial inclusion. Financial inclusion is also somehow providing or you know expanding the businesses. So to supply credit to a small business unit, a small finance bank was launched. That is true. To supply credit to a small and marginal farmer is also true. to encourage young entrepreneurs to set up business particular in rural areas so look this statement sometimes in upsc if you are not 100% sure do not take it this is true that this small financial bank will help the small business unit will help the small and marginal farmer but it is not necessarily that it will help the it will encourage young entrepreneur and particular in rural area it is not mentioned anywhere right though indirectly it will help them suppose that you are a young entrepreneur means if you are doing some startup and you are going to take the loan under a small bank finance bank they will give you but the, this particular bank was not established for this particular purpose that is the main thing you are getting loan for under this you are a young entrepreneur you are being financed by a small and finance bank that is different thing but does this bank was established for that purpose no that is not the thing so that is why third statement is less suitable in examination there is probability that you can click it as a correct one but because it will encourage it undoubtedly it will encourage it because there is one bank that will give you the loan but and it will also but not particularly in rural area that is also one thing it is also in urban areas as well in rural area as well not specifically for rural area so this statement should be eliminated only one and two will be the correct one next which of the following have the highest share in the disturbance of credit to agriculture and activity remember one thing this type of question two three times upsc has asked so you need to understand one thing it means they are asking you which of the organization give maximum loan to the agriculture sector agriculture and life sector which organization and they are giving you commercial bank macro finance institution suppose even if they take another statement like the nabard suppose that what will be your state uh, answer suppose you think that it could be nabard because it is asking about the agriculture activities or some cooperative bank regional rural bank but no that's not remember one thing which bank has the maximum money that is the commercial bank that is one thing second thing that all commercial bank in india they are liable or they are compelled to provide 40% of all credit in the priority sector lending remember that 40% of entire credit it means any commercial bank they are giving 100 rupees as a loan in that 100 rupees 40% or 40 rupees must be in the priority sector the priority sector consists of agriculture education and etc and sector maximum loan should be given under agriculture now because commercial banks I say bank. See the what is called state bank. Giving one lakh rupees, one hundred crore rupees loan. In that forty percent must be given in the private sector. Undoubtedly, it simply means that the money is going in the agriculture sector as well, and they need to maintain the norms of RBI. So, the commercial bank, 
because of this particular forms, not other uh, organization, because they don't have that much money, as simple as that. And simply, even if the NAVAD will be there, don't get confused, because NAVAD does not directly give loan to the, what is called, to the anybody. If you are going to the NAVAD and taking loan, no, you are not getting it. Suppose you are you know, going to the RBI and ask the loan. RBI does not give you loan, right? So NAVAD is a refinancing company. It means NAVAD gives loan to the uh, regional rural bank. NAVAD gives loan to the cooperative bank. And then the regional rural bank is giving you the loan. So that is why also the, the you will. Anyways, NAVAD is not here. Just for your uh, extra information I was giving. The answer will be A. Because these are foreign liquidity assets. This is also, this is an easy question. Liquidity simply means, we have also talked earlier, that it has an easily exchangeable in the market. What is called So which can easily exchange? It means, suppose if you are going to the shop after this, uh, watching this, Want a, what you, you are expected to give the current, you cannot give them any other liquidity that you have. Even that is much more valuable because that is not liquid in nature. So the first statement because that has the maximum liquidity. So it is four three or four one, right? After currency, look demand deposit with the bank and then the saving deposit and the time deposit. Demand deposit means what? Demand deposit simply means that the deposit that you have put it in the bank, that is payable on demand. It means, suppose if you are going, right now you have a saving bank account, you are going to the ATM and trying to withdraw the money, bank has to give it back to you because that is the demand deposit. So whenever you are demanding the money, bank is liable to pay that money, at that moment it is called demand deposit. Undoubtedly it has the liquidity because you can ask and you get it. So it has it. Means that you no know, fixed deposit or recurring deposit that fixed for five years or seven years. So you cannot take that money you know, whenever you want. Undoubtedly, it will have less liquidity. So two will come later. Here they are asking saving deposit. Look, saving deposit is the part of demand deposit, right? But not exactly the demand. All the saving deposit is the demand deposit, but not all the demand deposit is the saving deposit. Remember one thing: even you have a saving deposit, banks are asking for the minimum you know, payment maintained. That must be suppose five thousand rupees or two thousand. That must be maintained. So that money is coming under, what is well, that is the reserve money, right? You cannot just take it back. So after currency, it will be the demand deposit, then the saving deposit, and then the time deposit. So after four, it will be one, and then three, and then two. Remember one thing, suppose if you are confused between demand and saving, right? Because you think that saving deposit is also demand deposit. So after four, three can come here, right? And then, but remember here in this, what is the problem in the statement, or in the option B? The one statement means the demand deposit with the bank is taken after the second statement means the time deposit, but that will not be because always demand deposit will have a higher liquidity than the time deposit because time deposit will be, uh, you can take the money after certain years. So your answer will be 4132, D is your answer. <coughs> with reference to the governments of public sector bank in India, consider the following statement. Capital fusion in the public sector bank by the government of India has steadily increased in the last year. Look, no, uh, it is not a thumb rule, but most of the cases, out of 10, you can say seven, eight times, if they're asking you that consistently increase in the last decade or decrease in the last decade, it has a less chance to be correct. But remember one thing, it is not a thumb rule. It, it does not apply everywhere, right? Some things, maybe that India has, suppose that, no, in the last few years, if they ask you in agriculture, that India has a production is increasing, undoubtedly it is increasing every year, right? So the point is, it is not correct every time, but most of the time it is correct. And capital infusion to the public sector bank by public sector bank by the government. It means that suppose the government is putting money into the public sector bank, and that has steadily increased in the last year, every year. Why government will put money? Even government need money, right? They can put money whenever suppose if some bank is in the crisis, there is a possibility of going bankrupt, as it happened in the U.S. right now. In that case, government can put money, but it has increased in the last decade. It has less probability. So first is first you can eliminate even if you don't know exact data. That is what I mean. So first is not correct. To put the public sector bank in order, merger of association, associate banks with present state bank of India is affected. Look, this is so was probably asked in 2018. In 2017, the five associate bank of India also won you know, MBM, Mahila Bank, was merged in the SBI. So that's true. So second is not correct. Chairman of public sector bank are selected by banks board of bureau, but now it is not the banks board of bureau, it is a financial institution bureau that has you know, replaced banks board of bureaus. Remember that. Earlier they have asked this bank board of bureau, but now the bank bureau board of bureau is replaced by the financial institution bureau. Remember one thing, uh, why it has replaced? Because there was anomalies. Uh, first, what is bank board bureau? The job of the bank bureau was to select 
uh, what is called, not the exactly select, but the, you know, what is called, uh, provide the uh, first selected and then the, give the, what is called, uh, just give the, these nominations to the government and then the government will fi finally do that. So they are selected by, but not appointed by, the finally appoint, appointment will be taken by the government, but they were doing it. Recently in Delhi High Court itself, there was one allies, one the insurance company filed complaint against the Bank Board Bureau. They said that there is anomalies in the, uh, what is called selection of the chairman. They were selecting in the wrong manner. And the court has found it correctly, so they have abolished it. But anyways, when the question was asked at that time, Bank Board Bureau was the right statement. Which of the following is not included in the asset of the commercial bank? Look, asset simply when do we talk about any of the financial institution, there is two sides of it. One is asset and another is the liability. So liability simply means the money that you have that need to be paid it back. That is a liability. Means you have taken, suppose that 20 rupees from a friend, friend on debt. Undoubtedly you have to pay it back. That is your liability. So which one will be? Right? Of the, uh, they are asking which is not included in asset. It means liability. So look, the second estimate deposit. It means suppose this is the bank, the State Bank of India, and this is you. Um, you have put it 500 rupees in a State Bank of India. This is your deposit. So is this the asset of the bank? No, it is the liability of the bank because it has to pay it back, right? So second will be B will be your uh, correct statement. That is the following statement. In terms of short-term credit delivery to the agriculture sector, district cooperative bank deliver more credit in comparison to scheduled commercial bank and regional rural bank. I have just told you that the maximum money is given by commercial bank, right? Not, you know, so any of the organization, either district central cooperative bank or even ABAD will have the more. The first will not be correct. One of the most important function of DCV is to provide funds to the primary agriculture credit society. That is true. Second statement will be correct. First is not correct. In terms of interest coverage ratio in farm, look, what is interest coverage ratio? Suppose that if you are a bank owner, suppose that you are a chairman of a bank and there are 50 people in line, they want to take a loan from you, right? Now you have to take the person, what is called preferences, which one you are going to give them, which one you are not going to give them. So interest coverage ratio simply means any company, any organization, they are good enough to pay the loan back to you or the interest, right? Suppose that you have given, there is a company A and there is a State Bank of India. A State Bank of India has given earlier loan to the company A, right? And they have paid continuously every month the interest, also the prime, what is called the main amount they have given it later. Right. So interest coverage ratio of the company is very good. Simply means that any company which interest coverage ratio is good, they are a good customer for the bank to take loan. Right. As that is the meaning of interest coverage ratio. Now see the statement. It helps in understanding the present risk of a firm that a bank is going to give loan. Obviously, right? Because if you understand what is, if the rating of company A will be less, right? Suppose there are two companies, A, B, C, and the interest coverage ratio of A is higher and B is very less, which company you are going to guess? Give the loan, undoubtedly A. So it gives you an idea that how much risk you are going to take. The first is correct. It helps in evaluating the emerging risk of the firm. The bank, that is the same statement, almost similar. That is also correct. And third, higher a borrowing firm's level of interest coverage ratio, the worse its ability. No, I've told you if the higher rating, it means they have an ability to pay it higher. And the lower rating, it is the lower. What will be correct. The RBI act as a banker's bank. That we learned is a very basic question. Which of the following is correct in this? Other bank retain their deposit with RBI. That's true. Look, you simply understand bankers bank by bankers bank. As we people have a bank like a State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, or whatever. Simply, the all bank have a, their bank that is RBI. Like so, whatever relation we have with the bank, similarly, bank have the what is called RBI. So other bank can retain their deposit with, uh, with RBI, that's true, under the, what is called, you know, reserve repo rate, like SGF is presently, so they can do it, first is correct. RBI lend fund to the commercial bank in time of need, that's obviously, that is why they are, they are called lender of large zero. RBI advises commercial bank on monetary bank, that's also true, one, two, and three. And remember one thing, in some of the places, they have not given this all three as correct, but this all three are correct answer. RBI regulate in commercial bank in matters of liquidity assets, that is true, look, suppose that in SLR, they maintain it now, how much SLR they need to maintain. So they, what is called, regulate them. Branch expansion, that is true. Merger of the bank, that is true. And the winding of the bank, that is true. So all statement means they are regulating all the factors that is given in the statement. These are easy, easy questions, so you can do. Microfinance is the provision of financial services to people of low income group. This includes both the consumer and self life, the service is rendered under microfinance. That is true. Microfinance simply means uh, they have given, the that is given in the statement, uh, sorry, in the, uh, a statement of the question itself. It is the provision of financial service people of the low income group. That's true. 
So what are the services is being provided under microfinance? Credit facility, obviously. Look, if you are not giving low in, uh, no, money to the low income group, then what kind of uh, facilities is? The credit facility, there are some facilities there. Facilities are so these are all correct. These are just uh, you know, one-liners. If you know, then you know. If you don't know, and there is nothing confusion. No, suppose that you can say, okay, providing facility or not, but they provide it. If you uh, then you understand. Come to the next basic term: lead bank scheme. Look, in 1969, you know, the lead bank scheme was launched. It is also called service area approach. <laughs> service area. What is happening under the banking sector reforms? Some of the actions were being taken by it. So under lead bank scheme, a particular bank were given a particular district that you monitor that district and handle it. It means suppose that uh, if in India, entire India need to have a financial inclusion. So suppose in a state bank of India, they have given a particular district or a particular state that this district, all the financial inclusion or related to the financial inclusion thing that need to be done by you. That is a lead bank scheme. So see the statement. Uh, individual banks should adopt particular district for investment uh, intensive development is to see will be answered. Recently, Niti Aayog has started something similar uh, to this. Priority sector lending by bank in India constitute the lending of that we have already discussed: agriculture, micro small enterprises, weak section, education, etc. All of the above. It means all of the above is correct. Uh, look, as we are already discussing, we have lacking financial inclusion. That is why uh, the Jandhan Yojana was launched in India. We have it. We are lacking the financial exclusion. So banking correspondents, their job is to visit door and door, door to door, and tell them what are the facilities being provided. And if you want to open the bank account, they can open right then only. Not only open it, they can provide other services also. So what are the services bank sathi or the banking correspondents can provide? That is the question. It enables the beneficiary to draw their subsidies and social security benefit in their village. That is true. It enables the beneficiary of the rural area to make deposit and withdrawal. That is true. So both are correct in this. Core banking solution. <laughs> Look, earlier now, in the early days, suppose you opened a, you have a bank account in your own village or in own district. Then the all thing, means that you are the customer of a brand. That is the meaning, right? But now you become not the customer of a bank, branch, but a customer of a bank. Wherever you are, you can, you know, what is called, uh, take the money from there. You can use any ATM. That is the core bank. So they're asking, if it is a networking of banks, branches, which enable customers to operate their accounts from any branch of the bank in network regardless of open their account. That is true. It is an effort to increase RBI control over commercial bank. No. Look, RBI is not controlling any bank under this. Right? That is not the thing. It is a detailed procedure which a bank with huge non-forming capacity taken over. No. Uh, like, which of the following links all the ATM. This is one liner. This is a NPCI. It also, uh, what is called, take care of the rupee card and etc. Or linking all ATM in India, that is done by the NPCI. NPCI is a very, very important organization in the banking sector. So you go through the, all the work of NPCI. It also, suppose that UP payment, you regulate it. That is not RBA. So remember that. And it has recent directive related to the storage of payment system. Data. Look. What is the meaning of storage of payment system data or the data dictate? Here, suppose that there is a company named Google Pay, right? And on, if you are doing some transaction through Google Pay, Google Pay is an Indian company, right? So now you have all the information you have put it on the Google Pay. Your financial information is also there, account number also there. So, and Google Pay has the office in India as well as in other country, right? They might have office in the US and other country as well. So all the information that you have given to the Google Pay can they store that information in US or not, right? So Indian storage of payment system data, that is data dictated, that says that no, you can only store information in India only. You cannot take the information outside the India. That is the meaning. So the first statement, they shall ensure the entire data related to the payment system operated by them are stored in a system only in India. That is true. They shall ensure that system are owned and operated by public sector. No, not necessarily. As you can see, the Google Pay is not the public sector. The second is not correct. They shall submit the consolidated system audit report to the CAG. No, that is also not true. It is nothing related to the CAG. So only one will be a correct statement. Service area approach, I have told you it's a lead bank scheme, right? Uh, earlier, it's an easy one. Teaser loan by the commercial bank. What is teaser loan? Teaser loan means when suppose if you take a teaser loan, in the beginning, in few years, right, they give you less interest rate. You have to pay less interest rate. But when the year pass by, the interest rate gets much bigger. That is teaser loan. 
What is the offering? You know, common? The teaser loan are considered to be an aspect of subprime lending. That is true. Subprime lending means the lending where the chances of recovery is less. Right? They are called subprime. And if you are lending to them, that is subprime lending. It means suppose that you are giving money again to the Vijay Mahatma or the Nira Modi. It simply means subprime lending. That you are going to affect it. So teaser loan because in the beginning you are giving them less interest rate. They some people can come and take the loan, but later on when the, the interest rate will be increasing, they may not be paying it, and it can be the subprime lending. So first statement is correct. In India, the teaser loan are mostly given to the inexperienced, not necessarily inexperienced entrepreneur. That can be given to anyone. So second is not correct. Only one will be correct. Coming to the next, <coughs> a scheme for sustainable structuring state asset. Look, when you talk about structuring or restructuring, it simply means that you can restructure the loan. Suppose that if a com uh, any company or any individual have taken the loan and they are not able to pay the pay back the loan, then company uh, the bank can tell you that fine. If you are not able to pay back loan to me, then you just restructure it. Suppose the they can reduce the what is called uh, per month EMI that you have to pay or something. That is restructuring. But what is this particular scheme? It is a scheme for sustainable restructuring of a It is for the big company, more than the 50 crore loan taken, right? That loan can be restructured in a way that some equity can be taken from that company. Suppose if it is the Reliance company, they have taken the loan under this scheme, <coughs> and if they are not giving back money, then the bank can take some of the equity from it, right? That is what the restructuring. So it is a, a scheme of RBI for reworking the financial structure of big corporate communities facing genuine difficulty. B will be your answer. What was the purpose of inter-creditor agreement signed by the Indian bank? Look, inter-creditor agreement, it is also called consortium lending. It means, suppose that when you take a loan, you take a loan from a state bank of India, right, or any of the one bank, but if more, more than one bank coming together and giving you the loan, that is called inter-credit agreement, right? Four and five banks or even more than that, they come and give you loan. That is the inter agreement or consortia lending. So answer will be D. To aim at faster dissolution of a state asset of 50 crore or more which are under consortia lending. Basel Accord 3, this is an easy question, right? Basel, third Basel Accord came after the 2007-8 financial crisis that, you know, uh, what should be your CAR, how, how much reserve money you need to make, that is there. Basel is the name of a you know, uh, city in the Switzerland, that is why it is called Basel. Basel 1, 2, and 3 accord are there. So what are this Basel? Improve a banking sector ability to deal with the financial and economic stress and improve risk. That, look, if you know only Basel <coughs> little bit, you can solve this question easily because our statements are completely nonsensical. As you can see, it is a national strategy for conservation and sustainable biological diversity. It is talking about greenhouse emission. Transfer of technology from not fiscal, uh, no, only the B statement is correct. Let's see the following statement. Capital adequacy ratio. CAR simply means, it is also called capital to asset, you know, capital adequacy ratio. It means that if, suppose if you are giving a loan, uh, if a bank is giving loan of 100 rupees, they need to maintain certain percentage so that the, if in case of NPA and all, they have some security over there. That is the capital adequacy ratio. It's the amount that bank has to maintain in the forms of their own funds to offset any law, uh, loans that bank occur in the account holders fail to repay the dues. That is true. Uh, under Basel 3, it is 8%. In India, it is mainly the 9% for most of the bank. So first statement true, CAR is decided by each individual bank. No, it is not by the bank, but in the con country like India, it is RBI. In other country also, it is the central bank that decides. So second is not correct. So if you eliminate second, right, you know, the, this will not be, this will not be, no, no, only one is correct in this. Not, neither will not be right. Venture capital, this is the easy question. Venture capital simply means money given to the startup uh, people, people who is doing the startup and all. That is the capital investing in the startup, that is right. So a long-term startup capital provided by new entrepreneurs, that is true. IFC Masala bond, right, it is the Indian rupee denominated bond right, launched by the IFC. That is what is called IFC. Sometimes, which of the statement is correct? The IFC, which offers, offers this bond, is an arm of World Bank, that is true. They are the rupee denominated bank bonds are source of debt financing in public private sector. That is true. So both the statement and this will be the correct statement. Consider the following statement. The RBI manages and services, manages and services government of India security, but not a state government. No, that's not true. RBI manages both the state government and the central government. So the first statement is not correct. If you eliminate these one, you are left with three and two and three. So two. are issued by the government of India and there are two. Government India issued Treasury Bill, also the cash management bill. 
state government issue this you know what is called uh, dated security table second credit Retrieval offers are issued at discounted from per value this is true it means discounted from per value means that if you are buying treasury bill you will be not paid any interest but discounted from per value means suppose if the value of uh, treasury bill is 100 you will be given 90% discount but you are giving that treasury bill back to it you will be getting 100 rupees so that is what they are be getting interest that is why it is also called zero coupon interest, right? Because there are no interest. Answer will be the following is by registered foreign portfolio investors who want to be part of India without registering directly. Right? That is a part. This is just a term you need to know. It means suppose if a company in the US want to invest in Indian company, right? But they don't want to be part of this, you know, process of coming to the, you know, registering themselves in India stock market, etc. and all. What they can do, they can visit any of the company in US. They have the, what is called registration in India and they are doing transactions. And this company will provide the participatory note to that individual. So they are not coming directly in India, but they are coming through this company and not, that is called participatory note. D will be answered. This is the following statement. Commercial paper is the short term unsecured promissory note. That is true. Look, even in this question, if you know two statements, you will be able to solve Commercial This much knowledge you need to know if you are uh, preparing for the UPSC. Uh, now, see the, suppose if you don't know about the second statement, certificate of deposit a long term instrument or not. Suppose if you don't know it is short term or long term, so it is a short term. Call money is a short term finance used to interbank transaction. That is true. Look, call money. It is called, uh, for, for your remembrance, just to remember it, call money simply means you get the money on call. You call it, you get it. It means you call money only for the 24 hours. So that is the short term. Correct, right. Only C a statement where there is, so option C, 1 and 3. Because certificate deposit is not a long term, it is a short term. So second is not correct. And zero coupon bond are the interest bearing short term bond. We have just talked about that zero coupon bond, you do not get any interest, but it is the what is called? Uh, uh, you get the discounted uh, value. So only a statement one and three will be correct. Non-financial debt includes, right? Look, there are two kind of debts in by some of the definitions. One is the financial debt and non-financial debt. Financial debt simply means that if you are taking a debt to give that, debt, you know, what is called loan to someone. Suppose that in case of there is a NABARD, right? And then there are RRB, and then suppose that, sorry, RRB, and then there are individual. So RRB is taking loan from the NABARD, right, NABARD, and then RRB is giving loan to you. So when RRB itself is taking the debt, that is a financial debt because they will be giving that money to loan to someone. And non-financial means that you are taking a loan for your own personal use. So what are the things that can be? Housing loan owned by household, obviously, because that is your, uh, what is called, uh, non-financial debt, you are doing it for yourself, that is true. Or amounts of outstanding on credit card, that is true, that is your own loan, right, because credit card, you are not giving someone else. Treasury bill, look, treasury bill can be taken by some of the companies, it is also not, uh, you know, buying it, later on, on discount, you will get some money. So all three will be the non-financial in this. In a given year, official poverty lines are higher in some state than in other states. What are the reason? Because, you know, poverty line is, uh, in India, there is one poverty line under the Suresh Tandulkar committee, we have already learned it. But in some states, the poverty line is higher, in some states is lower. Why so? Because look, suppose that, uh, leave the poverty line. If you have to live in Delhi, and if you have to live in some of the rural area, what do you think will be the cost of living will be much more in Delhi? Why? Because there is inflation here. It means even if you have to take, a, you know, what is called a room on rent, or if you have to buy something in, in Delhi, there will be much more costly. But in rural area and villages, there will be cost of living less. It means there is much more inflation in Delhi compared to the rural area. So in a state-wise also, if suppose that in some of the state, the price is little higher, then the poverty line will be higher because the buying of the product, the, and also remember one thing, in India, poverty line is decided on expenditure basis, right, on monthly expenditure. So when you are buying things, you have to pay it more in some of the states than in other states. So on that level, that is why in different states, the price level, uh, poverty line is different. So wherever the option, that will go. So price level vary from a state in a state, that's why the B will be your answer. Benefit from the Mahatma Gandhi, uh, who are the eligible, right, eligible. Just remember that under Manarega, any individual, 
irrespective of your salary. Even the Mukesh Amani wants to do the job under Monadega, they can do it. But if, if he has to be in the rural areas, remember one thing. So any individual above 18 years of age, if they are residing in a rural areas, they want to do the job and they are willing to do, you know, what is what, manual work, then they can get a job. Any individual, irrespective of their salary or the income or <coughs> anything, any, you know, BPL and all, that's not required. So adult member of only scheduled caste, no, I have told you. Member of below poverty line, no. Adult member of household, all backward community, no. Any household, that's true. Anyone can be the member. Disguise and employment generally means, look, disguise and employment simply means that the more people employed in a job, that require less people, right? And those people who looks employed, but they are not employed. So that is simply meaning of disguise and employment. It means, suppose that even uh, 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 there is a, a shop, right? In this shop, if one person sit on, the, on, on this shop and the income of this shop is 100 rupees, right? Even if the five more people working here, the final income will be 100 rupees itself. So it looks like all six people are employed because they are sitting on the shop, they are doing some business over there. Looks employed, but they are not employed. Why? Because the marginal productivity, marginal means adding one more unit. So even there are five more unit in this, the final, what is called, final uh, no, outcome is same. That is called disguise in employment. So the answer would be marginal productivity of labor is zero. As per the industrial employment uh, standing orders, rules 2018. It, look, when this rule comes, it allows the company to make a contract or the fixed contract with the employee so that later on they cannot violate or they cannot go to the court, look, I need this, I have this right and all. That is what it is. Its rules for the fixed term employment are implemented. It becomes easier for the companies to lay off workers. That is true. Because suppose when you are joining a company, they have, you have to sign a contract in which the fixed term is written that, okay, this much time you have to give and all. I, 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 I can, oh, what is it called, fire you later. Not, it is not written fire you, but this is for that term you are employed here. For one year, for six months, for two years. Then it is easier for the company to, uh, what is it called, fire the employee later on. That's true. No notice of termination of employment shall be necessary. Undoubtedly because the notice is already signed in the beginning of the job itself. So both are correct in this. With reference to Indian economy, consider the following statement. This is the question. From now on, there are very important questions. Uh, that is, this question is from last year itself. And there is some controversy in this question as well. An increase in need, nominal effect exchange rate, indicate the appreciation of rupee. Look, first understand what is need and read. As we have discussed earlier that the, uh, what is the, suppose there are one dollar is equivalent to 80 rupees right now, it is not our exchange rate, right? It is just against one dollar. When you decide exchange rate in the international market, we do not have only one currency. Suppose if in terms of dollar, our currency is depreciating, but for all other currencies, just for take a hypothetical situation, against the euro, against the yen, against the Chinese renminbi, from all other currency, against it, if Indian dollar is appreciating, we cannot say that our currency is depreciating. So under here, we take the basket of 40 currency, 40 major currency of the world. Remember that earlier it was only 36 currency, but now it is a 40 currency. So all 40 currency, we take the geometric mean and then we find it. Now, if the value of need is increasing, right, an increase in nominal, it is indicates the appreciation of rupee. Look, why there are some confusion in this question? Because we can calculate in two ways. One is dollar by rupee, another is rupee by dollar. While calculating PPP, we gone through rupee by dollar. On the, you know, in the RBI website, it is explicitly written, it is written that the increase in need will have a, what is called, indicate the appreciation of rupee. It means that the RBI is taking dollar by rupee in terms of exchange rate. So if you are taking that, then simply remember that not only you know, in the need, but read also. If there are increase in it, it means that there is appreciation of rupee, right? So if the need is increasing, our currency value in the international market is increasing. So first statement is correct. Second statement, increase in read indicates an improvement in trade competitiveness. No, remember, I have told you that either need or read. If it is increasing, it means our currency is appreciating. Our currency's value is appreciating. So if our currency value will be higher in the international market, our export will be less because the price of Indian commodity will be high in the international market. If the price will be higher, suppose that if India's read is increasing, right? And say it, suppose that uh, any product, say the toothpaste, you are saying anything you are selling in the US market. So because it is increasing, the price of the toothpaste in US will be higher. But other countries' toothpaste that is being sold in there, that, that, that currency, you know, or the product, the price will be same. So what will happen then? The, our trade competitiveness will be less, not increase. Second statement will be 
because it will not be improvement, but our trade competitiveness will be lower. Second is not correct. An increasing trend in domestic inflation uh, to in other countries is likely to cause an increase in diversity between near and Obviously, because look, re as difference between near and read is that first thing, the near uh, take the basket of 40 currency and take the geometric mean, and read is the same thing adjusted with inflation. That's the like we study the GDP or current price and constant price. It is just adjusted with inflation and then we find out the read. Now, if there is a different divergence, suppose that if in India, the increasing trend in domestic inflation, in India inflation is rising, but in other country inflation is not rising, then undoubtedly the need and read will be higher because when we calculate need, we take the 40 major currency, but there there is no inflation. And India in read, we are calculating, adjusting inflation. And if India inflation is rising, the divergence will be much more. So three will be correct. Now suppose, if you know only two statement and you are little confused under three, right? So just eliminate two, you left with only one and three. So as I told you earlier that whenever UPS is asking difficult question, in most of the time, they are giving you an indication that this question can be solved by going through elimination method or uh, some of the you applied it. With reference to Indian economy, consider the following statement. If inflation is too high, RBI is likely to buy government security. Look. Suppose that in one side there is RBI and another side there is a market, right? And when R look, when the inflation is high, it means the money <coughs> is more in the uh, hand of the people. There are lots of people, also company, organization. Suppose that if it is you, right now you have 100 rupees in your pocket, you will be buying less product. If you have 1000 rupees, you will be buying more product. If you are buying more product and production is also not rising at the same time, the inflation will be there. So it means, it simply means what? If there is more money into the market, the inflation will be there. And if RBI has to control it, they need to take some money from the market, right, to them. Now come to this. If RBI is buying the government security, suppose there are some security here, government security, you are holding it, and RBI is buying it from you. So with that, with what they will buy? They will give you money instead. So government security is going in the hand of RBI and money is coming to the market. So inflation will be higher because we have just learned it that if there are much more money, inflation will be higher. They will not buy it, but sell it. Because if they sell it, then what will happen? The government security will be coming into the market and money will be going into the hand of RBI. So in that case, uh, the first statement is not correct. If the rupee is rapidly depreciating, RBI is likely to sell dollar in the market. That is true. Because look, if rupee is depreciating, right, it means, suppose that this is the Indian market, right? In, the, in this, there are dollar and there, there, are, there are rupee. And rupee value is depreciating means the value of rupee is going less. So if rupees value is going less and the dollar value is going high, what RBI will try to do? They will try to take, suppose there is RBI, they will try to take some dollar from the market. Sorry, some, no, what is called? Uh, RBI is likely to sell dollars from the market, not the uh, taking it. Because look, if anything that is more in the market, their value will be less. So suppose if there is a, you know, value of rupee is depreciating and the value of dollar is appreciating, then RBI will put dollar into the market. What will happen if there are much more dollar in the market, then the value of dollar will be less and our, you know, rupees value will be high. So that statement will be correct, right? If interest rate in the USA of Europe, European were to fall, that is likely to induce RBI to buy dollar. It has a two logic. One, RBI will interfere in the case if the rupee is depreciating or appreciating. Suppose that interest rate in USA or European Union is falling, right? Interest rate is falling. Then in that case, what will happen? There will be much dollar in the market. And our rupee will start appreciating it. And if there are too much appreciation of the rupee, in that case, our export will be less. And it will harm our exports. So in that case, RBI will buy dollar. So three is also correct. But again, come to the our elimination method. If you just know the first statement, that is the easiest statement of all three, right? So if you know the first statement is not correct, just eliminate first. You are left with B, second and third. So that is how you should attempt. Inflation index bonds. This is easy one. Inflation index bond simply means a bond that is adjusted with inflation, right? So uh, go through a uh, uh, statement that government can reduce the coupon rate on its borrowing by way of IIB. They can reduce because look, suppose if you are buying any bond from the government, right? On that is inflation adjusted. If, if inflation is rising it, then they will give you that much interest rate. So you, you don't have any effect of the inflation. So if that is, uh, undoubtedly that is a good bond to buy it, because even there is inflation, you, are, you will be getting much more money. So in that case, don't you think RBI can reduce the interest, what is called coupon rate? They can do it because they are giving you other benefit. So first statement is correct. IIB provide protection to the investor from uncertainty. That is true. I have already told you. 
interest received as well as capital gains and I have not tax. It is taxable because look, you know, there is a capital uh, uh, gain tax because there is a capital gain on that there will be capital gain tax. So third is not correct, one and two is correct. With reference to the expenditure made by organization or company, which of the following statement is correct. Acquiring new technology capital expenditure, that is true. Look, whenever you have to define or differentiate between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure, you just remember one thumb rule. That revenue expenditure is a day-to-day -day expenditure of the government. That neither create any asset, that also do not reduce any liability. It means by that expenditure, suppose if a government is buying uh, any uh, big tank from the other country or big uh, some uh, equipment from other country, that is a capital ex expenditure because there is an asset creation. But if government is giving you the salary, that is the revenue expenditure, the day-to-day -day expenditure, that is not creating any asset. As simple as that. Acquiring new technology, as I have told you, when they are buying new technology, it will help in production, it is for the longer period, it is a capital expenditure because there is an asset creation, first is correct. Debt financing is considered as capital expenditure. Here, half of the statement is true, right? While equity financing is considered revenue, no. Debt financing is capital expenditure because in that case, there is a reduction in liability. But equity financing, it means that buying shares of the company. So if you are buying shares, right, you know, that is what is called considering as a uh, asset creation. So that is also the capital expenditure, not the revenue expenditure. The second is incorrect, only one is correct. With reference to the Indian economy, consider the following statement. A share of the household financing saving goes towards government borrowing. That is true. Suppose that you are investing something in, you know, what is called PF, provident fund. That is the government is borrowing from you. Some of the money, you know, you are buying Kisan Bikas Patra from the post office account. That is the government that is borrowing from you, right? So first is true. That is your saving, but government is borrowing it because later part they have to pay it back. Data security is issued at the market rate uh, in auction from a large component of internet. That is true. Or almost 90%, right? No. So both are correct in this. One uh, extra information I'll give you that when you talk about only in internal debt or suppose that Indian government is taking money from the outside, that is the external debt. And if they are taking from the in inside only, like from the RBI and all, that is internal debt. India's internal debt is much more higher than the external debt. That is something extra you can remember. Consider the following statement. In India, credit rating agency are regulated by RBI. No, credit rating agency are regulated by SEBI. So first statement is incorrect. Now if you just remove the first statement, you left it only two and three. Even in earlier statement also no. Anyways, so that will be, but again see the sta other statement. The rating agency popularly known as ICRA is a public limited company. That is true, right? It, were, it is in the you know, uh, Guru Gram, I think. So second statement is correct. Brick work rating is an Indian credit agency. That is true. It is, you know, what is called sponsored by the Canada Bank. So third statement is also correct, two and three. Though, look, even suppose that because these agencies are not very popular, you are sub, you may not be knowing the name of these agency or may not be sure about it that the you know what is the ICRA or the brick work rating you might not be knowing it but the first statement was very easy to guess that the credit rating agency is not regulated by RBI it is the same way they do it so if you eliminate it you just left it to entry and that is the answer bank board bureau which of the following statement are correct the government of RBI is the chairman look it is not necessarily the government of RBI government of uh, sorry governor of RBI can be the chairman but not necessarily. It can be selected by the, uh, what is called, bureau and then the decide, de decision will be taken. So first is not correct. Again, go through the elimination. You just left it two and three. So you can notice it. But anyways, uh, see the statement. Recommended the selection of head of the public sector bank. That's true. Not only the public sector bank, but also the insurance sector as well. BVP help in the public sector bank in developing a strategic and capital rising point. That is true. So two and three is correct. Convertible bond. Look. Which of the following is correct? Convertible bond simply means a bond that can be converted in equity. Right? That is a convertible bond. So there is an option to exchange the bond for equity. Convertible bond pay lower interest rate. That's true. Right? So because why? Because you have a chance to convert it. If you want to convert your bond into the equity, you have it. So chances are there will be low interest rate because the flexibility it uh, contains. The option to convert to equity afford uh, the bondholder a degree of indexation to rising consumer price. That is true. Right? Now, <coughs> sorry. Indexation again means uh, connecting you with, with, with the inflation. Like suppose they can, what is called, connect it with the CPI or WPI and all. So that is also true, the both will be connected. this. The governor of RBI is appointed by the central government. That's true. The uh, certain provision in the constitution of India give the central government the right to issue direction to the RBI in public interest. Remember one thing, in this question lots of people made mistake. Look, uh, under RBI Act 1934, under sex, you know, Section 7, Section 7 of RBI Act 1934, RBI Act 
1934, that gives the power to the government that they can issue the direction to the RBI in public interest. It means they can interfere in the RBI affairs, right? But not the constitution of India. So constitution of India here is not a right term, RBI. And remember one thing, this section seven of RBI has never ever uh, applied in India. Uh, few, I think one or two years back, it was in the news that government was supposed, few years back, I, I'm not sure in which year, government was about to implement section seven. It means they can, I don't know what is, interfere in the RBI affairs, but they didn't do it even at that time. The second is not correct because of the constitution of India. It is not the constitution, but section seven of RBI. Governor of RBI draws his power from RBI times two. So one and three will be correct step. Again, go through the uh, elimination. Second is not correct, just eliminate second. You are left with one and three. So remember, look at all these questions. These are difficult questions, but still just by elimination, you can solve it. Both FDI and FII are related to investment in the country. Which one of the following statement best represent an import, important difference between the two? Uh, look, FII helps bring better management. No, I have told you earlier that it is FDI that brings skills and technology, not FDI, FII. FII only can uh, come with the money. So first is not correct. FIA helps in increasing capital availability in general, while FDI only targets a specific sector. That is sector. That is true. FII gives you the money in the market, and FDI targets sectors at which sector they are going to invest. Second is correct. So now you are not supposed to go there. You know, FDI only into secondary market. No, that is not true. FII considered to be more stable. No, FII, sorry, FII. FII is not more stable because there is investment. It is very volatile in nature. FDI is uh, what is called. Where is I is missing? That is stable. Which of the following uh, best reflect indirect transfer? Look, indirect transfer, when we talk, it simply means that a foreign company transfer shares, such as suppose that uh, a company of US, right, they have the uh, some shares in Indian company, right, in Indian company. Now, if they want to transfer this share, that will be considered as indirect transfer, right? They are transferring the share of the Indian company to other. So the foreign company transfer shares and such shares derive their substantial value from asset located in India. So D will be your answer. Describe the green washing. Uh, look, green washing here simply means the like just like a brain washing. You know, sometimes when the people do the brain washing, they talk about they, they give you wrong information just to lead you in a wrong way. So simply green washing it means a company what they do they try to convince you that their company is produ producing environmental friendly product and all right. So the, uh, suppose see the first statement uh, conveying a false impression that a company's produce products are eco friendly. That is a green washing. It means they are just manipulating. Or they give you wrong information for the people that this is eco-friendly, but that is not true. So that's all uh, from the to today's uh, PYQ. I hope it is beneficial to you all. And if you follow the approach that we have discussed, it might be helpful in your examination. That's all from my side. That's all. Thank you, everyone.